Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small business. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Garrity of Managey Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community at 18 Kent Street West in downtown Lindsay, Ontario. And with us today, we have Kevin Stapley. Uh, Kevin, tell us about you and your business. Alrighty. Thank you very much, guys, for having me on your podcast. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, as Brian said, my name is Kevin Stapley, and I am a conflict management professional. So I work as a mediator, mediate civil matters. I can do workplace matters, neighbor disputes, things of that nature. The only thing that I don't really do is family. It's kind of specialized in the thought of sitting down with couples during divorce to go over their assets and splitting things up in custody just didn't appeal to me. So uh, I'll, I'll stick to, to, you know, other things that work a little bit better for me. So I do mediations for that sort of thing. I also do conflict management coaching. So mediations are two party, right? Get people together and help them to work through their problems. Conflict coaching is one on one. So you have a coach and a client. So this would happen if a, if a, you know, a client is having either a conflict with another person and they're not sure how to handle it, how to best go about it, then they might come to a coach and the coach will sit and I have a, a system, a process. I'm trained in something called the synergy program, which is, you know, it has a series of steps and we work our way through them together. And the idea is that it's supposed to help to uh, set the goals. What are they hoping to achieve? How do they want to manage it? What is the problem? What does it look like? We take it apart. What is, what is it like for that person? So for the client, how is the conflict for them? Have they experienced it? And then we have them walk through it again. This time, putting themselves in the other person's shoes. How do you think? That conflict might have been for the other person mm. and we walk back through a process the idea is to try to help the person understand better for themselves what it's what's going on for them also give a little bit of insight into maybe how the other person is you know responding or reacting or why maybe yeah. their behavior is the way it is and taking these insights developing a strategy so okay now that we understand it how do we want to deal with it going forward right client how do you want to handle this and then we work on strategies and then do some practice testing, things like that, have them try different strategies out until they're comfortable and ready to proceed with actually having that interaction with the, the person. So how, how'd you get into this? Was this through the mediation and stuff that you uh, learned or? Yeah, sort of. So when I went to learn how to be a mediator, I went to York University and I took their dispute mm -hmm. resolution program and it focused heavily on the mediation side of things, but there was some on coaching as well. So I got a little bit of exposure to it and it really interested me. So I sought out what appeared to be the, the top conflict management coaching specialty that exists. And uh, the lady that has created it, she's based out of Toronto, hmm. Lucky Lucky, uh, a lady named Cindy Noble. And I signed up, took her four day training, got myself all trained up in that. And I still keep in contact with Cindy. She's world renowned oh, cool. in it. And her synergy uh, methodology is, considered to be the ideal coaching platform format for when it comes to conflict specifically. Yeah. So this is, uh, is interesting to me because I, you know, I've, um, you know, we knew each other in some previous professional work and right. some other uh, sort of colleagues in the conflict space. I think the, the kind of gap I'd like to bridge is when we hear about this, it almost to me, it's like, imaginary situations that I might never see myself in. And if I was, I might not know you or your service exists. Right. Now that I know a little bit more about it, though, I think it's very relevant for business owners, small business owners. Absolutely. So maybe let's talk about what, like, what does conflict look like? You know, are we talking fist fights in the lunchroom? Or is it, you know, other things that we might just not necessarily even notice, but could be like really hurting our businesses? Yeah, excellent. Um, so it could be fistfights in the lunchroom, right? That happens. It does happen, right? At, at a very high level. And I can go over a little bit of my background uh, in a little bit, but that was actually a, in a lot of ways the level of conflict that I dealt with before I got into mediation. Okay. My, my past life 
let's say, uh, with dealing with that kind of stuff. But conflict really, it could be something very, very small, very minor, very minute, right up to fist fights or, you know, it doesn't have to be physical, right? There are all kinds of, you, mean, you and your listeners, you know, may have past relationships that, you know, people that you used to care about a lot for, got along really well with, that you no longer associate with because of conflict of some kind. Could be coworkers, could be in your personal lives, right? Conflict is, it's natural, happens to all of us. And it's actually not a bad thing in and of itself. It's how we handle it mm -hmm. that determines yeah. whether or not it's positive or negative. And you get people together that have differing opinions, but like and respect one another and can communicate with each other in a way where they can feel comfortable sharing an opposing opinion with somebody else yeah. and the other person will receive it not as an attack but as a different opinion right and sometimes it leads to innovation and you know ideas that had, would never have been thought of if people kept things to themselves mm. right so teams that can do that really really well then you know they grow they boom and they're not afraid to collaborate work together and oftentimes what they come out with in the end is something way better than what they started with yeah. or where they thought they were even were going to go. But the teams that are able to do that really effectively are, you know, in a lot of ways, the exception, not the rule. Oh, they really are. Yeah. Yeah. As someone who's worked with businesses for a long time and, you know, I've gone through my own journey of conflict management and avoidance. And I think I admire the people who could figure out healthy conflict quicker yeah. because it's you know it takes friction to polish a diamond right Very good, yes. um you know you write that one down you, <laughs> you, know, you need to learn how to do that and how to disagree and how to push back and i was listening to another podcast today and one of the hosts was talking about um he was an in his early career was in a job and he was always kind of arguing and asking questions to the boss. And then he thought he was being annoying. So he stopped and the guy actually pulled him aside and was like, what are you doing? Your job here is to disagree with me because you're so good at it. Right. And so thoughtful and it always makes everything better. Um, and he realized that was one of his, his skills. So it's important to be able to have those conversations and to Absolutely. work together. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The conflict itself, like what it is, why we experience it, is because we are all unique individuals. We have our own needs, our own values, our own sense of identity, sense of self, right, that are unique to us, right? We may share some of these things with each other and other people as well, but we are all unique individuals. And when we assess the world, assess information, make decisions, we do it from, you know, within our framework, right? How we look at things, what matters to us, that sort of thing, right? But in reality, everybody is sitting there processing information, yeah. running it through their own filters. And it's reasonable to expect that different people will come up with different outcomes, mm -hmm. different priorities, all that sort of thing, right? So it's up to leaders good leaders to make sure that they provide some structure to their teams so that there's a healthy and, and organized way to go about this. Otherwise it can just be chaotic yeah. and, and just kind of all over the place, but, you know, sharing perspectives, you know, not just ideas, but also backing it up with the thought thinking behind it. I think this is important. And I think this is why, Yeah. right. So that other people can understand your thinking, right. That's how healthy conflict can lead to changes, right. Something that, you know, I suggest you, know, you guys, you know, might not, not that you don't agree with it, but you never even thought about it. Yeah. Right. Cause I bring something different to the conversation and you're like, Oh, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. Or maybe you're like, I don't think that's going to work. Right. So you may challenge me a little bit more on it. Right. You may say, I have some concerns and these are my concerns. You know, do you think I, I'm valid? Do you think that this, this will still work? Right. And this is how the conversation can blossom from that. And may find out that, you know what, that's really probably not a good idea. Right? Mm -hmm. As a team, you may come to the realization that what sounded like a good idea maybe might not play out that well. Right? Yeah. But at least that conversation happens so you could talk it all the way through. Mm -hmm. When people don't feel comfortable 
doing that, then a couple people monopolize the entire conversation yeah. and people just sit there, keep their mouths shut and be unhappy, not like what's happening and then complain to everybody else. Oh yeah. Right. Which is the, or not virus. do it. Right. Um, yeah. Which I think in the workplace is one of the biggest things I see in coaching is like, you know, people will come in the business owner, I kind of help them with some different things, but it's all about executing it. And yes. then if you have a great idea or a great thing, and then you have staff who are like, yeah, no, not doing that. Or, you know, this person and this person don't get along. It just costs the opportunity cost is astronomical when you start measuring it. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many costs, poorly managed conflict, you know, in life, but in the workplace, Oh yeah. It, the, the, the cost in time and absenteeism and turnover, and lost productivity and opportunity costs, like all of these things, right? You don't always see them. It's not like, you, you know, you know, you lose a client and you lose a bunch of sales, right? Yeah. Some, some things in business are very observable mm -hmm. and you can see them and you can measure them and they're right there. Some other things happen a little bit under the radar and you'll see it in the numbers. You'll see it out in the, the observable uh, part of the business but it might not necessarily be that clear that there's this connection between the two. Yeah. And conflict is one of the biggest uh, realities of that. And these days businesses are getting better. Like business owners are getting better at recognizing this and starting to enlist the services of professionals to come in and help work through workplace culture, things like that, and try and get a handle on things. Right. So that's where people like myself can be of value. Right. And you might not see the, the benefit from a bottom line standpoint right away. But if you invest in helping your staff either help them learn how to communicate better, right? Understand their conflict styles and how to communicate without triggering each other and have these better conversations, then productivity increases, people become happier, the culture improves, and people want to stick around, right? Aren't looking yeah, for the exit. I would almost, if someone's listening to this, it'd be cool to do an experiment because I actually think you could probably get a pretty quick turnaround on an investment like that. Mm -hmm. Just thinking of, you know, some people I've worked with who've resisted bringing in a professional or re they've resisted like addressing that conflict for, you know, again, that's another conflict in itself for yeah. the reasons they resist it. But just, you know, I, I think of one in particular who resisted, 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 did some of the things and the benefit was almost immediate Good. to the point where it's like, man, had we had done this two years ago, the whole business would have changed Good. by now. So Good that they did it. Yeah. I just think it's, yeah. um, and part of the problem is people just don't know or they don't know that, Oh, there's a solution to the, you know, the two people who don't talk to each other or like the, i always think of my dad worked for Nortel networks and, you know, big company, and there was these two um, people he worked with who were at war over the thermostat. So <laughs> he used to have these stories about what each one was up to because they would like go change it. And, you know, the one day the one was wearing a parka and the other wore a bikini to the office. And, you know, everyone thinks it's great. But then it's like when you think about it, everyone had to like find a reason to go walk by and see that show. Or like yeah. stop and talk to it so it's like they don't sound busy enough those two people yeah. frankly yeah so then it's like you just Prior, think priorities of, not yeah of well, that cost right or even yeah. like we all people love watching the office right and you know jim and dwight like little yeah. pranks but like what's the cost of like setting up all of these this is funny in the sitcom yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> funny not in the real world but in your own business especially you know small businesses you don't you know you're stretching even to have a couple employees sometimes yeah you don't really have maybe the work for full time but that's what you have to get so adding in conflict just adds so much to it yeah and no business is immune to it and i can guarantee you any business if you've got more that's more than just you yeah then you'll find some kind of conflict that's happening right that probably could be handled better right the experience tells me that the, you know, the research and, and data suggested as well, right? That's sort of the reality. And conflict 
there's different types and different levels to right? When we talk about conflict, what is conflict? Conflict is what is what we experience internally when one of our needs, value, or value, or a sense our sense of identity is being threatened or undermined in some way. So somebody said or done something that triggers an emotional response in us because yeah. we are we are hardwired, right? Hmm. Our, our primal you know lizard brains fight, fight, freeze response. Yeah. Right? That's where the way we're wired it keeps us alive. That's why the human race still exists this yeah. many years. And animal species and stuff as well, right? You we're wired every every bit of information that comes through our senses is a threat scan is run on it by our brains. Huh. Right? A particular part of the brain runs a threat scan. And if it doesn't identify any threats, then it proceeds into yeah. the, the prefrontal cortex and our critical thinking skills and we we think and we reason. But if you walk out of you know thrive here. You're not paying attention. You're on your phone. You step out in the road, and somebody slams the horn on. You hear tires screeching. You don't stop and look and think about what's going on. Oh, geez, there's a car coming. Yeah, it's coming right at me. I should, geez, if I don't move or if I don't do something, something that you know, you don't sit and ponder out your options and think about it. No, you startle. Yeah, you jump out of the way, hopefully on time, and then your brain catches up. It's totally crap. I almost got hit by a car. Right, but that I almost got hit by a car thought comes after you're off yeah. the road, not before. So our brains are wired for that, which is why a lot of people, when they get upset and they get triggered, is they say things and they do things that they later regret. That instance you just talked about right now, like I saw someone last week almost get hit by a car across the street there, and it was their own fault. And their reaction was giving the middle finger and swearing at the car. Yeah. And it's just fascinating. I obviously don't know a lot about stuff. I don't know anything about this. It was interesting to hear you say that. Yeah, like when you get triggered, you don't know some, you know, how you're going to react, but people react all different ways. Yes. And it's usually not done with a lot of conscious thought. Yeah. Because that's slow. Yeah. Our, our critical thinking process is slow. And when you're in danger, or your brain thinks you're in danger, it needs action. It's wired for action. It shuts off that part of your brain. And the primal part comes on and it's, it's protect yourself, either defend, run away, yeah. or in some case, freeze up. That those are the three primary responses. What do you want or the other? You're either going to run from it or you're going to fight against it. It's all about protecting yourself and your brain can't tell the difference. That's so interesting. Sorry. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the, brain, the brain can't tell the difference between like, getting hit by a car or somebody calling you a mean name. Right, that I mean, I'm you know I'm not going to use it if, you know yeah. any profanity in the podcast, yeah. but you know they come up to you because you know so like I said, there's our needs, there's our values, right? Our values are the rules through which we live our lives, right? And yeah. we have you know uh, we process all the information based on that, right? We decide what's good and bad, what's right and wrong, whether we are being good people or bad people, where somebody else is a good person or a bad person, all that sort of thing based on our values, yeah. right? And it's it's how we were raised who we were raised by, like our parents and our families and society, where we happen to grow up in the world, all that sort of thing. And when things are happening that run contrary to our value systems, then it gets a, a threat. That's it's a, threatening our, our way of life. I think people. about that and even a, a simple small business thing, and I've seen this a lot, is like certain generation or certain type of people are always, say, 15 minutes early to work. And then they get really upset at the people who are one minute early. And now all of a sudden they're, they feel threatened or their values are threatened. And now they're mad about that instead yep. of focusing on their job for something that's not even a rule violation, <laughs> but it's a difference in right. values. And, and it causes them to look down on the other, that other person yeah. who shows up one minute late. Now that entire person yeah. is a worse person because of that one yeah. particular trait, which is a whole other conversation about psychology and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right? We take shortcuts yeah. right, mm -hmm. to, to understand the world and oh, yeah. our values and that sort of experiences feed into that. If you're used to being 15 minutes early and you think that's the way it should be, and then people show up one minute early and they're like, so what's the problem? I don't care. Yeah. Like, well, that's an attack on your principles, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So suddenly you're triggered, you're upset and you're like, you know what? This, this person doesn't get it. Yeah. Right? They're, they're, you know, 
So then they start sabotaging each other a little bit at work or or whatever (laughs) whatever it happens to be, right? But that's that's the kind of stuff that it happens all the time. And low level, you know, right up to to significant things. Yeah. Right? But it's consistent across us all. I'm sure as I'm I'm talking, I'm hoping your viewers, the viewers, listeners, uh, are making some connections to this stuff as well, right? We can apply our own personal experiences to this where we've done the same darn things ourselves. Yeah. Right. And, and we'll, I'll continue to do it. The difference between me now and me 20 years ago is that I can catch myself now a little bit. I have more clarity. I understand what's happening. So when it happens, I'm like, Oh, see me, <laughs> but I can turn it around usually pretty quickly. Right. I mean, not everybody has that uh, self-awareness, right. Which is part of what I'm hoping to help people to gain the self-awareness. So they can conduct their, you know, guide their behavior choices a little bit more constructively. So I'm looking at. So I think where I was originally going with the whole idea with the conflict is that conflict initially is something that's internal. So we call mm-hmm. conflict is internal. Yeah. Somebody does something, somebody says something to you, and it triggers that kind of response. And now you're a little bit annoyed, upset, concerned, whatever you want to call that emotion that you feel. But the other person doesn't necessarily have any idea until you say something. Yeah. Until you somehow make it known to them, then they have then the opportunity to either acknowledge it and apologize and say, geez, I didn't mean to, right? I'm really sorry. And then hopefully that just kind of deals with it, right? Settles things down and, and whatnot. Or they may take a completely different approach and say, so what? I don't care. Right, that's a you problem, not a me problem, yeah. or something to that effect. Now you have what we call a dispute. Mm-hmm. Right, it's conflict that went from being internalized to externalized, but the other person, the source of the conflict, has rebutted your position. So now you have a dispute with them. Right, now you're upset. You probably triggered them. Now they're upset with you. Mm-hmm. You're upset with them, and now you have a dispute. Right, so in mediation, that's the kind of situation we would deal with disputes largely. Having because they can't communicate properly with each other, that's the struggle because they don't know how and they're upset yeah. with each other. So they get a, a neutral third party mediator to come in, and there's a process uh, that we work people through that is, works really, really well. Right? It's based on how a lot of the stuff I just talked about, but it's being a little more intentional about how this conversation happens, right? So that everybody gets a chance to speak and be heard and not interrupt. And, and the idea is to try to get past the emotional side of things and get digging down into what's actually our, our behavior is just a, a symptom of something else. Yeah. Right. So we got to get under the behavior and find out, well, what is it that actually is causing this behavior and then help the other person to understand how their behavior has impacted this other person and why it matters to them. Cause they probably don't really know. Yeah. And give the other person an opportunity to do the same. And then take this newfound understanding of each other and hopefully a little bit of respect for each other. And I mean, sometimes that ends enough. You know, just, oh, so I, I, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Right. I didn't mean for you know, my behavior to cause you to experience this right now that I know I'm really sorry. But apologies go a long way. Um, or it might be a matter of then taking that information and working out some kind of a, you know, process going forward. Okay, so how are we going to stop this from happening again, Mm -hmm. right, going forward? How do we need to talk to each other going forward so that we can be productive and not be upsetting each other and triggering each other and shutting down what could be good communication? Yeah. Right, so every every situation is different, but it can go a variety of different ways. Sometimes there's a legitimate problem. Maybe you have to get a team together because there is a business-related issue that needs to be resolved. And it takes you know a team to do that, right? So we can work through that once we get through once we get through the relational side of things, then we can work on the problem solving side. Yeah. Of things. This is uh, I'm thinking about Matt's lizard brain. <laughs> <laughs> I know if I, we went to see a movie on the weekend, do you think we would have needed conflict resolution if I reached over and ate some of your popcorn? Oh yeah, it's a <laughs> massive. I have a weird thing where no one can share my popcorn. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I mean, no. joke about because some people 
It's just a fun example of no one knew that. It was like, oh, it's an unreasonable trigger of (laughs) mine. So now why do you think that is? Probably past trauma, maybe. <laughs> but have you had, had a bad experience with people stealing popcorn? No, my, when my wife found out that I got annoyed by it, she would intentionally take popcorn. Oh, but yes, that sounds like a sounds like a marriage. That thing. sounds like a marriage thing. <laughs> but uh, it's it's interesting though that when you were talking about conflict management or just conflict management in general. I thought conflict management was dispute management, if that makes sense. Yes. I thought that is the whole conflict. But it's interesting now to learn that conflict could just be not even a disagreement, but we saw a movie the other day and Brian's like, I liked that movie. I also liked the movie, but if I said I didn't like the movie, that's now conflict. Yeah, especially if you follow it up with, I don't know why you'd like a movie like that. That was the stupidest movie ever. Yeah. You, have, you have no taste in movies. Now you're attacking Brian's character. Right? Now you're suggesting that he, his taste in movies, is something wrong with his taste in movies, mm-hmm. which is going to trigger a defensive response from Brian. And you're going to be emotionally triggered, Brian. Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, what's wrong with my taste in movies? Right? Who are you to tell me that I have poor taste in movies? Right? I haven't had the best taste in movies. Your movie choice suck, Matt. Yeah. But that's a that would be a fair response to him. It might be. You know what I mean? Yeah. But <laughs> next thing you know, I'm getting an air horn off while you're on a sales call. <laughs> <laughs> we call that escalation. Yeah. yeah. Just start escalating. But it's interesting, like, because I also thought, yeah, the dispute management and everything that not we were going to be talking about, but you were going to be selling as a service would be, oh, someone at a counter or a bad sales call or something like that. But it's interesting, the idea of the internal conflict that you would have with people. And like, I could have internal conflict with Brian. Like we just did a coaching thing an hour ago or a couple hours ago, I talked to a couple members of my team and that could have been an internal conflict. And in some ways, sometimes you want the good conflict. I wanted conflict. And that's what I was going to bring up where I asked them about those two things we talked about, like case studies in the contact page on my website and I didn't get much feedback. So in my head, I'm like, why am I not getting feedback? Am I a jerk? Do I normally tell people they're wrong when they give me their opinion? Am I like not supporting that well enough? Um, And it's almost a a marketing problem that you're going to have of how do I tell people what this conflict management is? Because that might be, me looking at, well, okay, I need to like improve the culture of my team. So I'm going to get a people and culture coach, which is a stupid title, but, um, <laughs> but or I'm going to get like customer service type of person. Yeah, like yeah, some people it's just, a bit of everything though, right? What you're doing. So I think that's gonna, not a challenge, but in a, in a way it's, it's kind of positive too. It's opportunities, but yeah, no, and I, and I agree. And this has been, you know, that's the reason why we all acknowledge and most people when I talk to them do acknowledge Conflict is a problem in my personal life. It's a problem in my professional life. But getting people to actually take action towards doing something about it has, you know, historically yeah. been a problem. Once you start peeling the layers back, it, yeah, well, it's, it's hard. It's uncomfortable. Some people don't want to face it, mm-hmm. which is a, another thing. Coaching is good for that sort of thing because it's you, you develop a relationship with your coach, right? And it's personal sure. one-on-one and it's confidential. So, and you have the coach that can gently peel, help you peel those layers back, right? Some people don't want to be in a crowd, singled out, right? yeah. in a group of their peers. Oh, yeah. Or, it's you know, even worse. Couples, couples therapy and all that sort of thing, right? Which I don't do either. I didn't. So, co- again, just another good co- coaching is not therapy. Like most people will understand sure. that, but I'll just clarify that right now. I understand, and I think it would be so powerful if you were able to encourage people to do therapy along with what you're doing. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. We're pro-therapy. We're pro-therapy. Okay. Off the podcast, we talk a lot about emotions and feelings. And yeah. I learned in the last 30 to 45 days that I am, uh, well, the internet told me, I'm an avoidant personality, meaning I avoid conflict. And when it happens, I freeze. And this is true in my personal and professional life. And I've at least taught myself not to get angry. Or I get angry, 
but I don't let it come out. <laughs> I don't express it, right? Well, that's important. I've, I've learned regulation is big. Yeah, and then I learned this with my wife about personal stuff, where I'm the avoidant and she's got anxiety, and like those two personalities, uh, they're good together, but also like they need to communicate those things together. Yeah. Um, because like when I freeze or I don't want to communicate, uh, she thinks the world is like the sky is falling. So anyways, like this is things I've learned and this is why this conversation is yeah, it's more interesting. Cool yeah. You see it at work too. Right? Oh, absolutely. And like you, again, you talk to businesses. We, you know, you and I both could probably offline come up with a bunch of stories where we can clearly link some conflict to lost money. From, oh, absolutely. You know, employees sure. that you just, maybe it's time for them to leave. Mm-hmm. You're afraid to do that. So you yes. wait until they leave or you wait months of whatever. And like that just, you know, money, money, money. Whereas a couple hundred bucks for a session might have been all you needed to like. Yeah. Organize solve. organize yourself into a develop a strategy. Yeah. How to have that difficult conversation in a way that you're comfortable with, but that hopefully also will be productive. Yeah. Because even, you know, when you, especially when it comes to, you know, ending relationships and things like that, right? You know, there's that the phrase about burning bridges, right? You can be really, uh, you know, harsh about any relationships, professional or personal, right? But then you also destroy the relationship along the way, right? Always better whenever possible to end a relationship positively and just agree to disagree or whatever it needs to be. Go your separate ways, not not burn any bridges, mm-hmm. right? But it takes some tact yeah, to be able to do that. Be able to choose your words appropriately, deliver them appropriately think about how what you're how what you're saying and how you're saying it might be being received by the other person right so that's what i got good at over years through lots and lots of experience in Mm -hmm. dealing with very high level emotional conflicts confrontational people i got good at choosing my words very carefully and keeping my my tone my demeanor and my body language and everything very consistent with the message that I want to deliver, right? which is another aspect. Right? There's dealing with conflict and then there's learning to communicate in a way that is less likely to trigger the conflict in the first place. Yeah. Right? The better you are at that, then the less negative conflict you have to deal with later. Yeah. But when it comes up, it's good to have the, the skill and know-how and wherewithal to actually do that as well. So. From, you know, from my perspective, I have capacity for all of those things um, and helping businesses and individuals that are interested in developing those skills as well. Start, you know, it starts with understanding what's going on, right? The psychology, understanding what's happening with you, and then understanding that similar things are happening with the other person as well, yeah. right? The more you understand what's happening, the easier it is to uh, self-regulate. Mm. Right? Cause you don't also add in not just the emotional triggering, you know, aspect of it, but also this, um, the fact that you, you know, you, all, you know, something's wrong, but you don't understand what you don't understand why, if you don't understand why or what, then how are you supposed to understand how yeah. to go about fixing it? But if you can kind of follow the bouncing ball along the way, okay, well, what did I, this person's upset. What did I just say? I've just triggered them. Well, I said this, this, or maybe they're upset. You know, maybe they, they, they think that I'm suggesting that they are not a competent person, right? So competency is, is an important yeah. value for us and a, and a sense of ourself, right? We all want people to look at us as being reliable, mm-hmm. competent, loving, caring, trustworthy, all these types of things. And when people say something that suggests we're not, our brains think, oh, we're being attacked, yeah. right? Not by a car running us over, but like I said before, the brain, our brain has not evolved <laughs> to modern society, right? Our evolution really? takes a long time. So I can't tell the difference. And attacks and attacks and attack, and it will trigger that response. It's the same thing if you're getting, you know, cars bearing down on you or somebody's grabbed you, you know, holding a knife, to trying to rob you, steal your wallet, or somebody just suggests that you're mean. Yeah. The brain triggers it the same way. Then we need to be able with our, you know, you know, intelligent thinking minds. Our lizard brains. Uh, lizard brains say, you're in danger, fight or run. Yeah. And then we have to be able to catch ourselves and say, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Yeah, there's no tiger. How, here. How, how, he how, how, how much danger am I really in here? Yeah. This is fascinating. I think you're going to save the world with this. Because <laughs> if you think about also not to point fingers at the states or politics in general, the last, let's say, 10 years, and now people are going to disagree with me, but the whole thing is there's a pressure for people to have free speech. And there's a pressure for people to be able to say how what they feel. But then people get so friggin' mad yeah. when they have free speech and they say something that's on their mind. And then those people disagree. And then that's when those clashes happen. Yep. And it's just fascinating to hear it from this. Like, you're not a scientist, but this scientific <laughs> side of it is yep. I already have a better understanding of how to converse with people or why people act that way. It's fascinating. Yeah. You just got, you got to give some forethought to how the other person might respond to what you have to say to them mm -hmm. and then choose your words carefully and be paying attention to their reactions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Verbal, nonverbal, watch their body language, um, all that sort of thing, right? Look for signs that they are being triggered, that they're getting upset. And you know, you can come right out and say, uh, I, I, I think I may have upset you. What? No, I'm sorry. What, what did I say? Mm. Right. And you can just address it right then and there, or you could just make subtle changes to yourself based on your assessment of the situation. Right. I had a guy come to do a septic system recently. First time had them there and I don't know if he was having a bad day. Well, I know he was having a bad day because he told me afterwards, Yeah. but he pulled in the driveway and our sump pump or septic systems in the backyard. I didn't really want him driving his big giant septic truck over my lawn, putting big ruts and stuff. Yeah. So as soon as I got out of the car, I said, do you have enough hose to get it all the way around to the back? And he was just like, he's like, oh, already with this? No. <laughs> right. Like, maybe I'll just go get some more hope. Like, he was just super, super angry, like just sarcastic. Yeah. Like, this was our start of our conversation. <laughs> so I'm like, holy moly. Okay. This is not going to get better. <laughs> well, I mean, I was annoyed initially, but I caught myself yeah. before I opened my mouth. And I'm like, okay. So then I just said, said, you know, this is my first time. I'm concerned about ruts in the, gar in the grass. I'm not sure what the process is. So that's why I'm asking you. It sounds like you're getting pretty defensive. I wasn't trying to upset you. I just want to understand what's happening. He's like, it's like, well, I'm not getting defensive. I just, I just had this call and this lady gave me a hard time about this and about that and whatever, whatever. I'm like, well, I'm really sorry to hear that. It sounds like it's a crappy day. It doesn't sound like the funnest job yeah. you have. Right. So, you know, maybe we could just kind of start again. Right. And, you know, we, we started the conversation. He actually dug out, uh, a, we had to get into one of the tanks and it was buried underground. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. So he's like, oh, it should be right over here. I'm like, okay, not very deep, right? He's like, no. He's like, got a shovel? I'm like, I do. <laughs> so got a shovel. He dug it out for me. Oh, wow. And I just stood around and chatted. And I mean, it ended up being a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> but he did more than he needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, technically, considering the mood he arrived in. And I let him, you know, complained about the boss and complained about the customer. And I just let him go. I don't know, whatever. And when he was done, I gave him a little bit of a tip. I'm like, I appreciate all the extra hard work. You know, I don't know about your employer, but you did a really great job. I know we didn't get started off yeah. on, on a good footing, right? But I really appreciate everything that you did, right? We shook hands. I gave a little bit extra money. Said, Thank you so much. Sorry about earlier, right? And we left things on a good note, right? But it could have went completely the opposite way, depending on what I chose yeah. to do. Now I know as a, as a you know a, a, an expert in this type of thing that I can't count on other people to catch themselves mm. and change their behavior. If it's going to be if it's going to be caught, it's going to be fixed and turned around. I'm going to have to take that on myself, right? So that was just an example of um, you know a recent example, and it wasn't business per se, but I mean. Had I gone for that, I never would have hired this company again. I would go with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now I probably will go with this company again because mm. uh, I have no reason not to and, yeah. and, and that sort of thing. So from a customer service standpoint, having your employees that do face the customers, mm -hmm. customer-facing employees, uh, 
trained up and educated in some of these skills can go a long way. Oh to, yeah, to uh, to improving your business and just making their lives easier, so not fighting and arguing with people. All it's the time. so uh, I know I've done a lot of of my own work in some of these things and understanding myself. And there's this tool that I learned off another podcast. It's uh, I forget what it stands for, but it's a print report and it's people's unconscious, like subconscious needs. And everyone has different ones. And sometimes just understanding other people on your team mm -hmm. helps avoid conflicts that you didn't even know would be conflicts. And, um, you know, to psychoanalyze Matt here, I think you, one of the ones you have is a need for like f fun and excitement, which is different than me. So like, I know for you, you get upset if you don't have a fun lunch. So if I was like, Hey, I'm buying you lunch. And if I showed up with like <laughs> a boring lunch, with like water and like a, <laughs> gross sandwich you would be so upset <laughs> yeah and that's a thing that's different so you know i should get to work why would anybody know. want an unfun lunch you've never worked in banking or accounting where people eat what you would say is boring at their desk Ugh. but eat but like it's kind of it's funny or we're, we're breaking the bubble here but it's a way to get to know things because it's like yeah Someone really wanted to upset you. They Ugh. could like have boring lunches, whereas you're a fun lunch guy. I hope no one takes that on of like, hey, I'm gonna be the one that really cracks Matt with non-fun lunches. People showing up every day with yeah. lunches, dull lunches. Have <laughs> this uh, J Kool Aid jammer and yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheese string. Have a nice lunch. But something like that right, would cause would trigger conflict for Matt. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you, you know, you're upset. You can't think as well later on in the day. Yeah. Like, and you'll take it out on Brian later because he'll he'll say something. You're already annoyed. Yeah. Because yeah. something somebody else did. And then somebody else comes along and just says something else. And you're like, that's it. I've had enough of this. You'll make things chaos. I know I have a need for peace and harmony. So I hate chaos. Good thing you also hate chaos. I hate so chaos like, also. You know, <laughs> right, but do you hate other people's chaos? Yeah. Um, I don't want I don't want chaos from other people. However, I was thinking when you were talking about how you didn't want to be a mediator for couples. I was like, oh man, that'd be fun as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it would be fun if you weren't concerned with outcomes. Yeah. <laughs> as a professional, your job is to make not make your job is to get them to communicate clearly. And if they can't and they won't, then it's gonna be really hard for you to do your job yeah right and they bring because of the emotion that's in that environment and sometimes fear and power imbalances and all that sort of thing right it can be super super challenging and not all not all relationship breakups are suitable mm -hmm. for mediation right then that's a reality as well but even the ones that are have their challenges especially when there's kids involved and all that sort of thing so it would be it, it's something that would be fun to like stand back and like fly on the wall and watch that's a Netflix chaos series. Is, but right. when your job is if your job is to actually manage that chaos, it's a oh. it's a different uh, different ballgame. Which I very early on chose not to get involved in. Mm -hmm. right? There's big business in it. Like you, you know, people do very, very well at it. It's just not for me. Right. It's not my background, it's not my uh, not my circus. Yeah. <laughs> not your circus. Not your my circus. circus. They're not my monkeys. Awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah, this has been, uh, I think, really interesting conversation. I mm -hmm. think for small businesses, like you know, we've both learned a lot about yeah. conflict. We know about you and your business. Uh, how do people find you and how do they know when they should bring you in? Well, you can find me by visiting my websites. It's uh, getconflictcompetent.com. Oh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It's a little, little, little longer to spell. It's a bit that. wordy. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't going to say it. it <laughs> that you said it. I was it like, is, okay. All my, all my business cards are printed up. And, <laughs> so getconflictcompetent.com will take you to the website. You can also email me directly at conflictcompetence at gmail.com. Or you can give me a call 705-934-2877 with any questions. Um, you know, just... You just want to kick tires or you have a specific issue and you just want some feedback on, I'm happy just to chat and meet and kind of go over things as you guys have kind of 
heard my, my skill set is broad and I can apply it in a number of different ways depending on what people need. Right. I've got, you know, the, the, the mediation, the coaching, then there's also consulting type work. So just meeting with organizations and leaders and individuals and just kind of helping them to go through their issues, problems and coming up with strategies and ways to implement and monitoring and that sort of thing. Or I can provide training, um, you know, whether it's online or in person, half day, that sort of thing. Um, to sit down with their teams and I'm a big believer in the, in doing scenarios, learning and then practicing yeah. in various ways. I think that's important mm -hmm. and you know, not everybody has the time or wants to invest in that, but this is the type of thing as they call them soft skills, right? So one thing to learn about it and I can teach you, you know, everything you need to know, but then give you an opportunity to practice it in as real an environment mm -hmm. as possible, preferably when there's some kind of, you know, low risk. Yeah. Easy to monitor, can give feedback kind of environment, better to test things out and hone your skills a little bit. And then out there in the field, when you're facing this stuff, then you can start implementing it, figure out what works, doesn't work, things like that. That's how I learned initially. I learned by just being thrown in. Uh, my background is in healthcare security. I did 20 years at a major trauma center in Toronto, working security there. And it was, the training was not that great at the beginning. It got better over the years, but it was thrown in. And here you got a mental health patient that's bouncing off the walls and threatening to, you know, murder everybody in the room. We need to move from this place to this place. Yeah. And then they have to take some medication. Yeah. Okay, go. Right. Uh, okay. I'll follow you guys. Yeah. Right. Trial and error, trial and error. So I learned what works through a lot of trial and error and watching other people do things well and other things do things poorly sometimes. And I pieced it together. And it was actually quite a few years later where I actually started getting the training and the education piece behind it. And I started to understand the why it yeah. works. So I knew what to do in most situations, but I didn't necessarily understand why that was the right thing to do. Yeah. Once I learned the why, then everything just kind of fell into place for me. It just was like a click and I'm like, okay, now I can assess the situation so I can understand it mm -hmm. and I can better plan my strategy yeah. going forward. Right. So that's kind of where I come from and that's kind of what you have to do. So at this point, I'm just hoping to be able to share my experience and my knowledge and understanding of things to help people get to kind of where I'm at, which is my ability to you know, not get in a lot of arguments. I don't fight with people. Anymore. My wife actually complains, or has in the past, that I'm no fun to <laughs> argue with, right? Because I don't argue with the tr traditional sense. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're so logical all the time. So <laughs> I, pride, I pride myself on it. But uh, my know. wife last week nexted me something, at, like she like was complaining about something. I replied back, she replied, logic, logic, logic. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a place for it, but not everybody appreciates that all the time. When I was doing my mediation training at York, we do role plays there, right? So I was the mediator for the role play. Other students were in different roles. And one of the students was supposed to be, um, at some point they was supposed to be like belligerent, really belligerent, really upset, really aggravating. So we're going through it and we're doing the mediation and I'm managing everybody and not really thinking about this side of things. But at, at, at a point, she's like, can we just like call a timeout here for a second? Okay. Like the teacher's like, what's going on? She's like, I'm supposed to get really, really belligerent. But every time I try to start, I look over at Kevin and he gives me this look. And it just shuts me down. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I can't, I can't, even, even acting, I can't get yeah. <laughs> really angry and belligerent. And it didn't, never even occurred to me that that, that that thought had never entered my head. At that point, I was still in the security role, transitioning into what I'm doing now. And I guess just over the time, I just developed a demeanor yeah. you know, and an approach to these things that I'd never given any conscious thought to. But I've heard it a few times since that just what I, the energy I bring into these situations makes it hard for people to actually really escalate and come up against me. Right. So I'm still trying to figure out how to bottle that. Yeah. 
right, for, for other people, but it's a great it's a great thing to have. For sure. Uh, and I'd love to be able to help other people develop that as well. It, it help your business life, professional life, personal lives as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, thank today. You. That was great. Uh, if you're listening and would like to be on the podcast, uh, send us an email to set it up at coorthasmallbusinesspodcast.ca.